Today we're going to jump back into solving some trig equations, uh, but today we're probably going to have to use the aid of these Pythagorean identities that we found yesterday. Now, this is a review problem. You'll notice that we're asked to find all the values of x, which is an angle, between 0 and 2 pi for this equation. What's nice about this equation is it's all in terms of one function, cosine. So I can treat that like an unknown x and factor out the common term, which in this case is a cosine. So what I'll do is I'll factor a cosine out of both terms, have 2 cosine x minus root 3 times cosine x is equal to 0. I can use that zero product principle, and if I know these two multiply to zero, one of the two has to equal zero. So therefore, x, cosine of x is equal to zero, and cosine of x is equal to positive root three over two. And what I'm asked to do now is, in theory, take and find values of x by doing an inverse cosine. However, as we know, inverse cosine sometimes locks us into one solution. However, this problem is asking us to take and find all values between 0 and 2 pi. So it takes us out of that, you know, zone for cosine of between 0 and pi to give us answers. We can get one answer that way, but then we'll have to look at our symmetry and know where another one of those can exist. So, let's go ahead and do that. Where is there a cosine value of zero on the unit circle? And you'll pretty much, well, not all the time, but a lot of the times you'll have values for this. So the cosine is zero, the x is zero at pi over two. I know that. And if I just had a problem that said find the inverse cosine of zero without this instruction up here, then that would be my answer. But it says find all the values of the inverse cosine or all angles that give me an x value of zero. There's another one down here at 3 pi over 2. Where's the cosine root 3 over 2? That means where's the x root 3 over 2? Well, that's somewhere over here and somewhere over here. Normally, we'd only answer in that first quadrant, but since it says give me everything between 0 and 2 pi, I'm going to answer both. So, the x is root 3 over 2 at pi over 6, and since it's got to be positive, 11 pi over 6. All right, so that's what we've already done. Now we move into this problem. Notice, in this problem, I have 2 cosine squared of x plus sine of x minus 1 is equal to 0. The problem here is it looks like a quadratic that I could factor, but I can't because notice the different functions. So I need to get this equation in a quadratic form such that all the functions are the same. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a Pythagorean identity. I know that cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. So I'll make that substitution, distribute, and I prefer to take and make all my square terms positive. So if I bring everything over to the other side, that's 0 is equal to 2 sine squared of x minus sine of x minus 1 is equal to 0. Whoops, already did that. Factor 2 sine of x sine of x 1 and 1. Negative here, positive here. So in this case, I know that sine of x equals negative one-half, and sine of x equals one. And this, again, asked me to find all the values between zero and two pi. So if I wanted to do that, where is sine of x equal to negative one-half? Well, that's somewhere here, somewhere here. 
and it's asking me for positive values, so no negative values. So that first positive value would be like a 210 degrees, but it wants me in radians, so that's 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And where does sine equal 1? Well, where's the y value equal 1? That's only going to happen one time at pi over 2. So we're going to move from finding values between 0 and 2 pi to finding all values. So that means every time I go back around the circle, I'll hit that value again. And you'll notice this is a term that appears to be able to be factored. But since I have different functions, it can't use a Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared, 1 plus tan squared is secant squared. So 2 times secant squared minus 1 is equal to tangent squared minus 3 secant of x is equal to 0. Multiply through, that's 2 secant squared x minus 3 secant of x minus 2 is equal to 0. Again, factor. I need a 2 and a 1, negative and a positive. So where does secant, and that's equal to 0, where does secant of x equal negative 1 half, and where does secant of x equal 2. Well, I don't do that very well. I like changing things. Secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So if I take the reciprocal of both sides, I'll be in cosines. This asks me where does cosine of x equal negative 2 and where does cosine of x equal a half or x equals the inverse cosine of negative 2 and x equals the inverse cosine of 1 half. Cosine can't be greater than 1, so this first term has no solution. Where does the cosine equal a half? In other words, where are my x values a half? x values are going to be a half somewhere up here and somewhere over here. And not only here, but every time I go back around again and again and again, notice they're tasked us to find all values. So I know this is at pi over 3, and this is at 5 pi over 3. But every time I go around the circle again, I'll get that answer. So to say every time you go around the circle, that's 2 pi k. 2 pi k. And those are all the solutions. Moving over to the next problem, you'll notice this has got a quadratic in it. Again, we don't have the same function. I'm going to do that. But I also want to set aside equal to 0. So let's bring, well, let's make an identity first. 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. So this is 7 minus 1 plus cotan squared is equal to cotan of x. This goes to 7 minus 1 minus cotan squared of x is equal to cotan of x. I like my squareds positive, so this is cotan squared of x plus cotan of x equal minus 6 equals 0. Factor cotan of x plus 3 cotan of x minus 2. I'm not a big fan of cotangent, but we know the cotan of x equals negative 3, cotan of x equals 2. Cotan of x can be either of these because we know cotan of x has a range that is all real numbers. However, 
I don't really know what those values are going to be. Likewise, if I say, well, I'm not a fan of cotangent, and I want these to be tangent, tangent equals negative one-third, and tangent equals one-half. So x is going to equal the inverse tangent of negative one-third, and the inverse tangent of one half. I don't know where those are. They aren't pretty unit circle problems. So we're going to actually have to use a calculator to get this done. So let's go ahead and do that. First thing I'm going to want to do is put this in the correct mode. So we'll hit mode. Make sure we're in radians because that's how our book's answering pretty much everything. We're good. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the inverse tangent of negative one third inverse tangent of negative one third is going to be about negative three or negative point three two one so I'll put these answers over here And then let's get the other one. We're going to take the inverse tangent of positive a half. Let's say 0.5. And that's going to be 0.46. Now, where are these things in terms of radians in my quadrant? 3.14 is pi. So negative 0.31 is somewhere down here. And 0.46 would be somewhere up here. That's that angle. That's that angle. So now here's the deal. We want to know where we're going to get tangent values like this and for all values. So if I were to find a y over x ratio that's positive, you know, this is positive, it could be in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. And this could be. 0.46 away. So you'll notice that's pi away from each other. So if I take and say, if I could have this answer here or here, and those are pi away from each other, and every time I go another pi, I'm going to get back onto that value, all I have to do is add multiples of pi to that. And I could say plus. 3.14 and but again 3.14 is an approximation so I'd rather say just pi. Also, where is there a negative tangent value equal to this guy? Well that would be over here at 0.32 away and those are pi away from each other so if I take and add pi into that, that gets me all my values. So when you can't use the unit circle, once again, go to your calculator, take the inverse tangent, sine or cosine or whatever it is you need to do. I would recommend always changing secant, cosecant, cotangent into sine, cosine or tangent. It just makes life easier. That's all we've got. We'll see you tomorrow.